Hey, it's Mike here, and today a new carnivore diet symptom has dropped, could be described as cheese hands. Really, it's xanthalasma on the hands from a case study from JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association. And in this case, I don't think this is really the main concern here. I think xanthalasma in other places is a lot more common on the carnivore diet, which we'll get to. And really the most important part is what it represents, what is potentially happening on the inside of someone's body. And we also need to look at really the expected response by the carnivore community, really, calling it propaganda by JAMA, which is wild to me and people defending the carnivore diet. So let's just get into it because clearly the carnivore diet is getting out of hand. And by out of hand, I mean cholesterol appears to literally be coming out of their hands. Lightning fast, the first Greece trip this fall immediately sold out. So I launched a second one that still has spots. We're talking three nights in Athens, four nights on some islands, amazing food, and much cheaper than other comparable Greece trips. Link below, let's get to it. First off, I just wanna say that I see parallels between a lot of people who go plant-based for health and people who try a carnivore diet for health. It's people just trying to prevent disease or in some cases trying to fight it but it just depends on what information they were fed and what background they might have, which makes them more or less susceptible to going down one path. So I understand people are just trying to be healthier here, but we have to start seeing the writing on the walls. We do not have as much data on the carnivore diet, for example, and a lot of it is anecdote based, but that community tends to ignore the anecdotes against it. For example, you know, a doctor showing his low vitamin C levels. So vitamin C, prior to starting carnivore, my vitamin C levels were 37. About three months into carnivore, I wanted to check them and they were 12. Now 12 is actually very low, but clearly I was vitamin C deficient. Having coiled hair, which shows his body was unable to make collagen properly, issues like that, and so many more that I've covered, but let's get to this case study in JAMA. We're talking about a 40 year old man who ended up getting this xanthalasma of the hands, which as you can see, more detail is really these yellowy sort of cheese looking stripes where there are deposits of what are cholesterol plaques technically. And while they just show pictures of his hands, he also has it on the soles of his feet and his elbows. So yes, he was on a carnivore diet and it is the case that his cholesterol was about a thousand, which you know sounds, oh my God, that sounds crazy, but is really not that unheard of on a carnivore diet based on the amount of animal fat and just different metabolic ketosis related things that are happening. His baseline cholesterol was around 200 to 300 and he was on a carnivore diet for eight months, so less than a year. And there's a bit of controversy about how much of what animal products he was eating. We'll get to that in a bit. But first, let's just look at what xanthalasma actually is and diseases it's associated with. Xanthalasma is a condition when you have these xanthomas, these little pockets or plaques of cholesterol, which can happen to people with normal cholesterol levels. Who knows, they might have some transport issue, whatever. But clearly in the case of carnivore dieters, it's a high level in the blood leading to deposits. It's heavily associated with higher levels of cholesterol. And what's actually happening is that we have certain areas of our body that are more prone to it because they have maybe more blood vessels. So more cholesterol in the blood that can get there. They're thinner skin so you can actually see it. And that happens to be you know, around the eyelids in certain places as well as <laughs> in this case for this guy, his hands and elbows. And it can also happen around people's ankles by their Achilles tendon, which is interesting, we'll get to in a second. And as you might be thinking, if cholesterol is depositing in plaques in random places on the body essentially, then what's happening in the arteries where we're most concerned with it, where it's usually building up. And this is a case where it's very likely that the risk of this is way higher. I know carnivores will just completely deny this. They might go, it's only when you have inflammation and not everybody is gonna have high levels of inflammation. Well, to that I have to say, look at children with familiar familial hypercholesterolemia, they end up getting atherosclerosis, they're put on lipid lowering medication, and then their plaques reverse. Like they clearly weren't riddled with random other diseases and inflammation. And then we also have a great interview with Dr. William Cromwell, a lipidologist on Nutrition Made Simple, talking about how you can end up getting these atherosclerotic plaques without high levels of inflammation. Uh, people say you have to have inflammation in order for ApoB to cause a plaque. You do not. But once we have a plaque, more ApoB feeds the plaque, it grows. And the more inflammation, the more the plaque not only grows, but becomes unstable and leads you to more event behavior. And additionally, sorry to point to a mouse study. I know it's just a mouse study, which has problems for several reasons, but this one basically screwed up the LDL receptors of these mice so that their LDL went super high, like 1500, really not that different than this guy's LDL. And of course they got 
a bunch of xanthelasma, as well as really rapid atherosclerosis. And for another example, we have a woman in her 50s with familial hypercholesterolemia, again, the genes that can lead to high LDL or bad cholesterol. In this case, she had xanthelasma as well. It was given lipid lowering medication, and then those essentially disappeared, as well as some claimed regression of her plaques by the authors, just mentioning that as well. And then we have another study on people who had that Achilles tendon xantheloma issue, and they essentially were going in to get stints, and the authors were essentially asking how severe is the heart disease in correlation to these xanthelomas, who has them, who doesn't, and they say that these xanthelomas were independently associated with severity of coronary artery disease, and actually detecting them may be useful not only for diagnosis of familial high levels of cholesterol, quote, but also for identifying patients with advanced cardiovascular disease. And do I need to say it again? Yes. Mendelian studies using genetic randomization show that LDL in high levels, that bad cholesterol is causal to atherosclerosis. Like I have to say this over and over again, no one refutes that. And that's what brings me to how this is a larger carnivore diet community health issue that we see, xanthelasma, and that is in particularly around the eyes. I had actually previously seen cases of xanthelasma on carnivore diet forum posts. In particular, Carnivore Cringe has a couple on there and just a quick Google around looking at Reddit and some carnivore Facebook groups. I was quickly able to find a dozen cases of xanthelasma around the eyes. You know, whether we're talking about Carnivores for Christ Facebook group or we're talking about uh, Sean Baker's World Carnivore Tribe. We can see people developing it relatively short after a carnivore diet, sometimes within a few months. Yeah, just case after case after case after case after case after case. And in the words of Sean Baker himself, despite making countless health claims. I, I, I will say, I don't know if, if my diet is gonna make somebody live longer. I don't know if it's going to either prevent or increase the likelihood of some disease because we just don't have the data that shows that now. Let's just say I've never seen this on a vegan forum. <laughs> anyway, why isn't this happening to every carnivore dieter was a question that I was thinking about. And I think it has to do with, hey, just everybody has some different cholesterol transport genes. They might have different like skin consistency, et cetera, and also just different types of carnivore diets where one might be heavier in lard and tallow and higher saturated fat, which increases LDL more etc. There can be different factors. Okay, now let's get into the controversial aspect of what he's eating because we essentially have the carnivore camp saying he was eating such an insane diet that this doesn't apply to anybody. And so the actual quote from the case study is, his dietary habits included a high intake of fats consisting of six to nine pounds of cheese, sticks of butter, and additional fat incorporated into his daily hamburgers. And this unfortunately led to articles like this one saying that he was eating six to nine pounds of like dairy and cheese per day. And an official JAMA commenter even was like, hey, is this per day or something else? Like what's going on here? Cause it's just really ambiguously worded. But I will have to say, looking back at that sentence, it says consisting of six to nine pounds of cheese, comma sticks of butter. And then you can kind of think of it as a break and saying additional fat incorporated into his daily hamburgers. It doesn't say daily diet. So it's very possible that I was buying six to nine pounds of cheese per week and then eating that, which adds up with him saying that he was on a weight loss track. And for some harder numbers, yeah, 7.5 pounds of cheese, just to average it out would be 13,000 calories. And then if we're looking at butter, it's double that. He would not be losing weight. It's much more logical and likely that he was eating the normal amount of calories or even less than 2000 per day. And he was adding that to his daily hamburger. And it's much more likely that he grabs that six to nine pounds of dairy when he shops every seven to 10 days. We could do the math with, let's say a ratio of three to one cheese to butter, why not? And then he has that 200 or 300 calorie hamburger daily. So we're talking about between 1900 and 25 hundred calories per day, nothing really crazy. You know, in line with losing weight as like an active male. But it's also funny because carnivore dieters are saying six to nine pounds, oh, that's so much fat. Like that's obviously wrong. But anytime there's a health problem on these carnivore forums, people respond with eat more fat. 
eat more fat every time. And right away when I looked at this case study, I saw, okay, this person's losing weight. You can tell by their hands that they're not overweight. Are they what they would call a lean mass hyper responder? I did a whole video about this. Essentially, people on keto or carnivore diets getting super high levels of LDL, generally skinny, and then they're saying, oh, this is some special condition where they are claiming at least that they're probably not having accelerated atherosclerosis, which I wholeheartedly <laughs> reject. And then I found that, yes, one of our classic lean mass hyper responder guys who's you know gotten a lot of press around this, Nick Norwitz, who very clearly is into keto diets and appears to at least defend carnivore diets, who went on a Twitter rant, which was essentially turned by carnivore dieters into a just quick slideshow that they can use to debunk and totally dismiss this case study, and citing the lack of detail and how his diet couldn't possibly be real. There's, it couldn't just be language ambiguity. No, he says that this is actually propaganda by the journal against diets such as the carnivore diet. Now, the part where I agree here is that, yeah, I would have loved to see more detail in the report. Like I finally got access to the PDF and it was basically <laughs> the abstract. And so it was like, yeah, it would be interesting to know. And yeah, I reached out to the authors, but I did not get a response in time for this video, unfortunately. And I do agree that they should go in and just edit that sentence, more clearly show what they claim they were eating. But even then, I don't see any reason to doubt the credibility of what's going on here. It was somebody on a carnivore diet, which is a relatively rare diet, getting a very rare condition, which is highly connected to a trend that we see on the carnivore diet, which is extremely high levels of cholesterol. Like there's still validity to this. There's still concerns about this, but I just want to butt in really quick and say that this does show the bias of Nick. I know he's all like, oh, I don't care about diets, blah, blah, blah. But I can tell you right now, if a vegan case report was written like this, you know, short about some health issue that was rare that a vegan had, I don't think that he would be writing a giant Twitter rant about how it's propaganda anyway. So I think he should evaluate that. No, I think this was just three doctors who were like, holy crap, this is crazy. Let's just at least get this out there. And they went ahead and did. It's not some weird bias. It's not some manufactured propaganda from the ground up. It's literally just sharing the case. So yeah, clearly this is a widespread issue. And again, I don't think it's gonna hurt anybody to have some little cholesterol pouches on their eyes or wherever. What it is, is representing really bad stuff happening with the cholesterol system in the body and potentially accelerating atherosclerosis. I mean, I don't like to share them because it's, you know, serious health issues that people have, but you know, there are a lot more anecdotes of people having severe heart related events, you know, on a carnivore diet. And it's just all sort of matching up and again, they're just latching onto the positive anecdotes and completely ignoring the negative ones, which you know, needs to be looked at. And then finally, no, this is not propaganda. What is propaganda is immediately taking a Twitter post and turning it into a slideshow so that you can just ignore a neutral case study about the negatives of your diet or potential negative concern. <laughs> anyway, carnivore stuff aside, if you do wanna to come to an awesome vegan Greece trip, you can click link below and check out that October trip if there are still some spots for you there. And let me know down below what you think about this. If there's anything about the case study I missed, any other observations or knowledge about xanthalasma I didn't mention, feel free to add it below. Love to hear it. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.